Hi there. Uh, in our last video, we had a look at what matter is. We learned that matter is made up of atoms, and we also had a look at the uh, Rutherford's model of atom, where we understood that atoms are made up of um, electrons, protons, and neutrons. The neutrons and protons uh, reside in the center, and you have the electrons revolving all around them. So there were a lot of research happening. Uh, the field of atomic structure and uh, one such physicist who was researching uh, called as Niels Bohr discovered that the that Rutherford's uh, model was not entirely true so he came up with a better model now to understand that we have to first look at what light is or, or, or we have to understand uh, uh, the basics of light and uh, so what is light so we know that it's not matter it's not similar to matter we cannot uh, touch it we cannot feel it um, if you put your hand into a light uh, your hand just goes through it it's it's it's, it's, it's something that you cannot or it, the properties of lights are not same as as matter so what is light now to understand light we have to first look at waves. So we have to first get a, some basic understanding of what waves are. Now consider there is a there is a tree, and uh, there is a person here, and uh, consider that there is a rope attached to it to this tree, and uh, imagine that uh, that person is is jerking that that rope up and down like this, a movement like this. And what you will see is that the rope goes up and down, goes up and down, goes up and down like this. So this is, if you do it like this, this is what you will be seeing happening to the rope. So what actually happening or what is actually happening is that um, when the person pulls it up, the particles in this rope goes up and uh, when he pulls down, so he pulls it up. And, and it stays there, so the energy that is being um, exerted by the hand goes up, stays there, we stop it there, then we bring it down, so there is an energy that brings it down, and then we bring it back again. So if you see the pattern, so we have an, we, we exert an energy up, stop, then bring it down, stop, and then bring it up. So if you look at that pattern, that exact pattern, the pattern that we are applying then the pattern of the energy that we are applying at the rope takes the shape or the, uh, that rope takes the shape of the energy that we are applying on that rope so the rope first goes up so that's the pattern that we went up and we stopped there and it and it came down this is the, this is the stopping part and then we brought it down so this is the bringing down part the energy that brings it down and we stopped there and this part and we repeat that and what we see is that the rope taking that shape of the energy that we exerted and the direction it goes up and down so the energy flows the rope the particles in this rope goes up and down the energy that we have exerted also goes up and down it goes up and down and it hits the tree and it actually bounces back so so this part is the energy bound, bouncing back so it bounces back the source and the rope continues uh, to go up and down as long as we we are providing that energy or as long as we are exerting that energy so this is uh, so this this energy that goes which traverses from your hand to the tree and comes back takes form of that uh, of that rope and we say that it is a it is a wave or, it, or, or it, it takes shape of a wave. Now, there are a few properties of this wave or the energy that we move up and down. So, that, that we can have a look at. So, for example, so this is the place, this, this perpendicular line is the place where there is no energy. So, this is the place where we stopped, and then we brought it back and then stopped. So, this is the place where there is no energy. So, the distance between this point and the top post, the highest point of a waveform is called as the amplitude of that wave. So 
that is actually the, your uh, the energy associated with that uh, particular waveform so if if you if you exert more energy you will see that the rope going up so if you are if you are observing a wave or, or a pattern and you see that it has a higher amplitude that means that wave has a higher energy now another thing that that people usually study when they study waves they, is, is the distance between so this flap we will call it as the crest the part that goes up and the part that goes down we will call it as the trough the distance between your neutral point and your crust or your trough is called as the amplitude the distance between two crusts that is this one to this one is called as the wavelength and the number of time it goes up and down in a minute or in a second in a unit time let's call it as hertz so there's one more thing called as or, or let's call it as the frequency so say for example uh, a wave goes up and down like this say 10 times in one second we say that that waveform has a frequency of 10 so these are the basic properties of a wave and uh, so basically what it is is, is, is an energy flowing up and down uh, through a medium which we call it as, as, as the wave and, and, and it has properties like it, it will have an amplitude the higher the energy the higher the amplitude they will have a distance between the two thrusts are called as the wavelength and the number of time it goes up and down in a second is called as uh, the frequency or in, in more physics term we call it as uh, hertz so uh, now that we have a basic understanding of what waves are uh, let's have a look at light now the light also behaves similarly or it has uh, similar properties as, as waves uh, for example I'll give you an example where it would be helpful to visualize uh, how light comes and, and how it has a pattern of, of waves now consider for example sun for example sun is, is, is what gives us light and we'll take it as an example so consider this as, as, as sun and the sun is made of lot of atoms so we'll have lots of atoms inside your sun and uh, as you know the atoms have, have, have electrons in them they'll be revolving around your nucleus so this is one electron this is another electron now consider that there is something in the sun that is giving energy to your electron and it forces the electron to go up from one of its orbit to the next level of its orbit consider the, the electron goes up and uh, some energy that, that pushes so similar to we pushing the rope up there is an energy that is exerted on the electrons on the sun which makes it which gives it energy and it, and it forces the electrons to go up and uh, once it goes up it loses the energy and it comes back so now consider a motion where the electrons are going up and down constantly so you will so this is your electrons and it is moving up by, by one energy level it's going up and then it comes back so what you see is that the electrons going up and down and up and down similar to the pattern that we made with our hand so you can probably imagine an electron making an, an energy wave that goes up and down and goes up and down and goes up and down like this now this waveform provided by or, or produced by movement of electrons let's call it as an electromagnetic wave or, uh, or, or yeah let's call it as an electromagnetic wave the reason we call it an electromagnetic wave is because it has a charge so when so as you know that electrons have charge so when you push the electron up it increases the charge of uh, of, of the electron so now consider this as that that part it, this is the part where the electron gains its energy say suppose the charge that it gets is say something let's give it some particular value say, say plus one it goes one level of energy up so it has a one level of plus one charge and then when it loses the energy the electron comes back 
So it reaches a point when there, when there is no charge, similar to one where we stopped in our rope, we stopped there. So that's the point where it didn't have any energy. Then we brought it down, then it came back, and let's call it as minus one. And then we stopped. So this is this part, the neutral part, and then it again went up. So it has a charge. So this wave that is produced by the movement of electrons up and down, this particular wave has a charge associated with it. It has a it has a positive charge that goes up, and then it has a reverse of it. That is, it has a negative charge which comes down. So we call it as similar to waveform. We we'll call it like, we'll call it as uh, the crust, and this is the trough. They they have a neutral point where there is no energy or where is there is no charge. Let's call it as the zero. And similarly, you will have the wavelength. So uh, the number of times the electron goes up and down per second or the frequency will decide what is the what is the length of uh, or what is the length of or what is the wavelength of that particular wave uh, of that particular wave. And you can see the wavelength and and the frequency. That is the number of second the number of times the electron goes and up in in a second. So that is so if you look at it the properties of a wave produced by an electron going up and down up and down is the same as as the uh, the property of a wave that was formed when we moved the rope up and down now everything remains the same the only difference being the wave produced by an electron has a charge it has an electrical charge which goes up and down plus it also has a magnetic charge so we know magnets right so magnet if you, if you take a magnet if you have observed it it has a north pole and a south pole so uh, um, similarly the wave so electricity and magnet are are, are related I'll, I'll explain that more in, in in my next videos so along with the positive charge it also has a magnetic field let's call it as the north pole so the north pole of the magnet or the north uh, force or, or north pole force is, is this side consider this and the downside it has say the south pole so this wave not only has a has a electrical charge with it but it also has a magnetic property the upper side you can consider it as the north pole the force in the north pole and you can consider the downside as the south pole of a, of a magnet so this kind of waves we call it as the electromagnetic waves because they have a charge associated with it and they also have the magnetic properties of a north pole and a south pole so we call it as the electromagnetic uh, waves so these are what is called as electromagnetic waves now one thing you have noticed is that the frequency at which these waves are produced now there will be several electrons in the sun so they will be of different types and different types of atoms or different types of electrons will be producing uh, different levels of energy or they will be emitting waves in, in different frequencies. So because there are lots of things or there are lots of atoms of different particles or different types of atoms in sun, you will have uh, different types of waves coming out of sun or different of different frequencies because the, the amount of uh, 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 the, the amount of times an electron goes up and down depends on the energy and different electrons will move or will have different frequency based on or based on an energy given because they are different they, their mass is different so now we know that uh, electrons has the capability to produce this this waveforms and uh, they will and different atoms or different electron different types of atoms will produce different electromagnetic waves of different frequencies so some will be say something like uh, say 10 times per second and some electrons will be doing say 1000 times some will be say 10,000 times the frequency at which the, the waves produced by certain atoms will be 10 times, 100 times, 1000 times etc. So we, we can have a chart of which the uh, uh, of which the uh, the frequencies are there so for example uh, let's have a chart 
where there is an electromagnetic wave which, uh, which has a frequency of 10, which is equal to 10 raised to 1, then there is something called as uh, 10 raised to 2, etc., etc. So, it's still somewhere around 10 raised to 16. So, this is what is called as an electromagnetic spectrum. An electromagnetic spectrum is nothing but electromagnetic waves of, di of different frequencies. So, um, a wave that has a frequency of 10 times per second is called as is, is, is called as radio waves somewhere around this and uh, so this entire spectrum or this is the spectrum in which uh, electromagnetic waves come out of certain uh, of certain uh, um, electrons now light or or, or the light uh, or the electromagnetic light is also an electromagnetic wave so that is the first point light is nothing but an electromagnetic space uh, electromagnetic uh, wave. Now, the wave that can be seen by us, the, or, or the way we see things, is that is that certain wave or electromagnetic waves of certain frequency. If I remember correctly, is it's between um, ten raised to fourteen. That is any wave that that fluctuates or that has a frequency of ten raised to ten and fourteen times zero, and I think to ten raised to to fifteen. So any electromagnetic waves that has that is between in this range is, is visible to our eyes or we can see it so we usually call it as the visible range of electromagnetic spectrum and uh, we usually associate it with with color so we have something you might have heard of something called as vibgio v i b g g y o r so what is this is that red will have a certain frequency say 10 raised to 14 and this will be on your increasing size so if if a, if a electromagnetic wave fluctuates at 10 raised to 14 um, frequency or 10 raised to 14 times per second and that wave hits our eyes we see it as red and if it and so these values might not be exact i'm just giving you a number the the numbers will be different and uh, anything or any electromagnetic spectrum or any electromagnetic wave that vibrates higher than 10 raised to 14 so let's say that that violet is say 10 raised to 15 then we see it as 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 uh, as, as violet so for example uh, sun the the electromagnetic waves produced by the sun it has the visible range plus it has the other ranges also higher than visual range or any electromagnetic waves that are higher than 10 raised to 15 there are uh, spectrums are called as you know the uv the ultraviolet rays then you have the gamma rays so they have by increasing the frequencies they have higher energy so uv rays have higher energy than visible light so they are uh, not so good because they have higher energy and they, they hit your skin and it can it can cause the electrons or the protons to jump off and, and they are not good for health so this is what uh, um, electromagnetic spectrum is and uh, light is nothing but uh, a specific range in the electromagnetic spectrum that our that our eyes can see so for example if you if you want to know why a, a car is red or why a car is black or, or white or any color so what happens is that sun radiates all these electromagnetic waves of this range of visible range and some other ranges also so that electromagnetic wave goes and hits the car now the car will have some chemical coating which you call it as as the paint now that paint has the capability to absorb uh, all the colors or, or all the electromagnetic waves of that particular range except one so for example if if your car is yellow what that car will do or what the chemical coated in that car what it will do is that it, all the electromagnetic waves coming from the sun it will hit that car the chemical will absorb everything violet indigo blue green everything it will absorb but it will not absorb yellow it will push it back it will reflect it and that reflection hits our eyes and uh, our brain so yellow has that particular uh, electromagnetic uh, frequency when it hits our eyes of that particular wavelength our brain interprets and we see it as as yellow so any color that we see around is nothing but 
uh, that particular object absorbing all the electromagnetic spectrum of visible light except the color that it is so if it is if it is blue it will absorb every all the electromagnetic waves except blue and that that particular electromagnetic wave will be reflected that hits our eyes and we see it as 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 the color so light is as i said light is nothing but an electromagnetic spectrum or electromagnetic wave uh, emitted by by the sun even even the tube lights or or, or the lights that we see they are nothing but uh, electrons moving up and down and emitting that uh, that electromagnetic wave which we see it as 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 light so that is what light is okay <clears throat> so now we know that uh, that light is nothing but an electromagnetic wave and uh, colors are are nothing but uh, uh, electromagnetic waves uh, happening at different frequencies that's what light is and that's what color is now there were different experiments done with light and uh, one of the experiment that proved that uh, light is uh, in fact a wave was something called as a double slit experiment so what you have is that you have a you have a plank or, or you have a body or you have a metal plate something like that and you insert two slits into it two holes and uh, you have another plate here uh, uh, you and you have another wall here in which you can see and what the what the scientists did was they, they passed light through it through these slits and uh, what they saw was when they when the light came out of these slits they were diffracted because of this like this the in, they had, both the lights entering through these two slits interfered with each other and they diffracted and in the wall they could see black and white black and white black and white patches which is uh, so if you, if, you, if you just increase this you can see like this and it goes like this so you can see troughs and troughs here formed here so you can see uh, black spots here and white spots here black spots here and white spots here so because of these interferences and because the light that traveled through took the shapes of uh, waves you could find that or or or, or, or at the end in the wall you could you could see the black and white patches which suggested that uh, that light uh, was in fact a wave because if it was a particle if it was not acting as a, as, a, as a wave or if it was acting as a particle the light would have traveled like this and it would directly hit the wall and created some sort of image there some sort of uh, um, uh, feelings there or some sort of uh, activity just at the point where the slit is but it was not like that they were creating ripples and uh, and uh, and uh, the shape formed in the wall was uh, suggested that that the light who had uh, wave properties now lots of experiment were happening and uh, one of the other experiment with light that scientists did was something called as a, as a, as a, as a photoelectric effect or photoelectric experiment so what they did was they had a metal plate and uh, they emitted a beam of light to this metal plate and one thing that they noticed was the electrons in this metal plate were uh, bumped off or they started showing off as soon as you shown certain lights to it now why is this important i mean i mean uh, lights have a wave like structure and waves can have energy and they can hit it and they can they can bump the electron off it so why is it so uh, this is called as the photoelectric effect light hitting a metal plate and and electrons bumping off those electrons are called as the photoelectrons so why is this so important the important thing here to note here is that uh, so take take for an example if you are if you are sitting in front of uh, uh, a sea and uh, say suppose that you are knocked off you you fall down now it's the wave that caused it so the probability will it be a normal wave that will knock you off a smaller wave or will it be a higher wave that will knock you off 
so in our experiences we know that a higher wave which will have higher energy has a higher potential to knock you off now in case of light it is the brightness which decides uh, the energy of the light as i told you told you earlier when you when you are uh, uh, jumping a rope or when you are jerking a, a, a rope if you have higher energy if you exert more energy you just push it up so that means the higher will, uh, the rope will go higher so the more the higher the rope goes the more energy it has so if you have uh, exerted higher energy it will go higher so it is the amplitude of a wave that decides the energy of it in the same in the same way light which has a higher amplitude has higher brightness so we from for our eyes if we see something that is more bright that means that it has higher energy and it has higher amplitude now the thing here was so in that case the lights that should be deflecting or which should be knocking off these electrons should have higher energy that means a more bright light should have the higher potential to remove this electron out of it but the experiments showed that uh, it doesn't matter if it, it, the brightness of the light didn't matter even a dim light <coughs> knocked off equal amounts of electrons than than what uh, 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 electric light which has higher uh, amplitude knocked off they were almost equal so it's not it's not the brightness that mattered or it is not the amplitude that mattered so there was something else so obviously if we take light as a wave we cannot have a have a theory which which will prove or or which will make this experiment right so because if we are taking light as a wave then a higher a light which has higher brightness should knock off more electrons here but that was not what was happening now this was very perplex um, this was this was very confusing for the scientists uh, they didn't know how to have to have to make sense out of it so so at the same time what the scientists also discovered was uh, it was not the brightness but it was the color which was actually causing the electrons to knock off so um, a light a red light won't cause uh, electrons to jump off but a blue light can cause electrons to jump off so that was a bit of an eye opener so if you if you, if you remember uh, what i talked about electromagnetic waves if you look at uh, the electromagnetic spectrum so red has a has a lower frequency than blue blue has a higher frequency so they knew that it was not the brightness that was causing the electrons to to knock off but it was uh, uh, the frequency that was causing um, the electrons to knock off so so if you if you look at a diagram here say for example um, this is my red light and say suppose this is my uh, blue light so blue light has uh, has a higher frequency and uh, if you take say a 1 second gap and if you look at how a, a, a red wave will look like so you can see that it will look like something like this a, a, a red light because it has a lower frequency but the blue light has a higher frequency so if you look at it so this is in a 1 second gap so if you look at the wave formed by a blue light it will be something like this because it is a very um, high frequency the frequency is very high you would look like something like this so the time is the same the one second the velocity of both the lights are same but it is the frequency which is changing and if you if you look at this line you could see that uh, this is more or less like a, like a wave but as the as the frequency goes higher this is acting or if you look at it it is more linear or it is more particle like so they they came to a conclusion that uh, if you treat light as a, as a waveform you cannot explain why the electrons are getting knocked off but if if you, if you take uh, light as a particle so in this case 
uh, a light which has higher frequency will have higher energy associated with it. So, if, if instead of considering as a wave or instead of considering energy as, as the amplitude, because both of them uh, might be having the same ampl amplitude, instead of considering the amplitude as, as the energy factor, consider the frequency as the energy factor and you can explain why the electrons are getting knocked off. Or in this case, you are treating light not as a wave, but you are treating it as a, as a particle, a continuous, uh, uh, a continuous packet of, of, of light which has energy associated with it. It's the frequency which is uh, the energy and, and you treat it as a packet or this is what the, the, the scientists called as a quanta or, or a packet of light. You consider them as, uh, as particles, behaving as particles, not as uh, as waves, consider them as normal particles which has energy because of their frequencies and you can explain why the electrons were getting knocked off. So this is called as uh, the duality of light or the dual property of light. So what that means is that uh, light can act as a wave as well as it can act as, as, as a particle. The particle form we call it as the quanta. Uh, or, or a light packet, we call it as packets. So it has this dual nature, light. Now, this is very uh, important. So we, there were certain other experiments which were also going on at the same time with, with lights and things. Um, one such experiment was, if you pass electricity through uh, through an element, say for example, if you're passing electricity through helium, the, the the experimenters saw that it emits lights, but the light had a specific color. So when I say color, it is nothing. If you just correlate with the electromagnetic spectrum, the electromagnetic wave, a color is nothing but a frequency in which the electromagnetic waves are sent out, or it has a specific wavelength, or that's what a color is. So. What they found out was if, if you pass electricity through helium, it has a specific color. If you pass uh, electricity through neon, it has a specific color. It glows in a, in a separate, in, in, in a specific color. And they found that any, you pass electricity through any element in the periodic table, they will emit light or they will emit electromagnetic waves at a specific wavelength. Now, this is very important. So if you, if, if you want to know um, uh, what are the elements that, are, that, that a particular substance is made up of, if you can observe or if you can look at uh, the electromagnetic waves that that, that particular uh, object gives out, and if you study that and compare it with uh, the electromagnetic waves that are passed through your uh, periodic table, you can make out what element it is. Now, usually the scientists use this, um, for example, if you want to study what are the components of a sun or, or some long star, what are the elements that reside in that. So what, I, what usually what, what the scientist people do is that they take, a, they, they observe the light, they, they take the light that comes out from that and uh, reads the spectrum or, or reads the uh, frequency at which the lights are emitted. So for example, uh, hydrogen will be emitting uh, electromagnetic waves at a specific frequency and if you take a light from a specific star and if it, if it matches the frequency of hydrogen the scientists people know that okay this particular um, star has hydrogen element in it that's why um, we are getting that specific spectrum of light now <coughs> this was very important the, the basic question was uh, so there should be some relationship between atoms and and the specific lights that they are emitting. Because if you if if you look at uh, hydrogen, they, they they emit light as a, at, at a specific frequency. If you look at uh, um, say lithium or beryllium or any or any element in the periodic table, they have their atoms emit light at a specific wavelength. So there should be some correlation between uh, between the atom and and between the atoms and and uh, uh, the 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 light waves or the electromagnetic waves 
that they send out now this was studied by uh, niels bohr uh, he studied a lot of it the relation or he tried to correlate a lot of things between what's the relation between you know this electromagnetic waves sent out by an atom and and the atom itself so he studied a lot about it and uh, he came or he came up with a with a concept called as energy levels so uh, what he said was consider a stone so if you have a stone here somewhere here and uh, if we drop it because of its height it has something called as a potential energy so it falls down and it might not break my flow but if you raise it a little more so say suppose we are dropping um, the stone from a little more higher level and we drop it it might break the flow so because of higher levels that stone has higher energy and uh, because of that level difference um, that object has has higher energy now if, if you compare it with uh, um, for for atoms anything with uh, um, higher energy will have a higher frequency and frequency is 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 equal to uh, if you remember the frequency is equal to the color in which that particular that particular atom emits light in so what he said was electrons they are not just orbiting the nucleus but they can only orbit at a specific energy level they can so an atom will have different energy levels and the electrons will be rotating or will be orbiting in that energy level every atom will have a specific energy level so for example um, if if you take uh, an example of the hydrogen atom so hydrogen atom has a single electron so this is the nucleus and uh, and uh, this is the first orbit of 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 helium and it has an electron here now it has a certain distance from the nucleus and it will always be the same all the electrons will be orbiting in the same level now consider there is one more level so these levels will never change uh, in a hydrogen atom the the first level of energy and the second level of energy will always be the same they won't change so if an electricity is passed this electron will temporarily get higher energy and it will jump to this orbit and when it loses the energy it goes back to this orbit and that lost energy or whatever energy that is it has gained it will sent out in 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 form of um, electromagnetic wave and the frequency will be equal or the frequency will be directly proportional to the energy that 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 the electron has gained and he said that according to niels bohr uh, atoms or 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 in an atom there are only certain energy levels possible so an, an electron here can only an electron in a hydrogen atom can only attain an energy that is allowed in that hydrogen atom say say for example we will just give it as a number say suppose uh, this energy level we call it as say 4 joules let me not call it as joules for simplicity let's say that uh, this energy level has say 4e and uh, hydrogen allows 4e and 10e or 10 energy level so what happens is that when this atom gets some energy this electron gets uh, this electron can have up to maximum of 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 10e So what it does is that it jumps to the 10e curve, and uh, when it when, when when the source of energy is removed or when it loses the energy, it goes back. And the amount of energy that hydrogen emits is 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 6e. So the frequency at which hydrogen will be emitting uh, the electromagnetic waves will be at 6e. And and 6e the energy if you know it is directly correlated to the frequency. So it will be emitting light. Hydrogen will always be emitting light at 6e or at that particular frequency or at that particular color. Same if we take some another atom, say if we take helium, so which has uh, 
which, which might have say three energy levels and the energy level here will be say something like like uh, six and here something will be like eleven so an electron moving from six to eleven will have will have gained five e and uh, when it loses it will be transmitting five e amounts of energy so helium will be emitting electromagnetic waves or a color of a, of a different um, spectrum so according to Niels Bohr electrons do circle around the nucleus but they have something called as energy levels he, he named it as n is equal to 1 n n n2 n3 and all atoms will have uh, specific energy levels and they only allow uh, electrons to have energy at that specific level they cannot exceed it or they cannot have uh, lower levels of, of energy they can only jump from this energy level to this energy level or the energy levels that are allowed in that specific atom and that is the reason why when electrons jump back there is a definite quantity of energy that is gained or released so that's why we see uh, specific colors uh, when electricity is passed through certain electrons and he also explained uh, he, he, he disapproved the method of uh, the atomic structure of Rutherford where he said that electrons are just uh, moving around the nucleus but he didn't say anything about en the energy levels but uh, Niels Bohr said that uh, uh, they are, the, the electrons circle uh, the nucleus but at certain energy levels every atom will have certain energy levels that are allowed and electrons will be residing only at that energy levels. So this was the Neil Bohr's uh, uh, atomic model. Now uh, this is, I think, this is what I also studied at uh, at my at my school days. And uh, but a lot of things have changed. Uh, so we now have the quantum theory or the quantum model, and uh, this doesn't explain much. This phase actually his. Uh, this theory of losing energy and everything works only for hydrogen atom. If you take any atom that has more than one electron, this, this doesn't stay. And also there are several other flaws. And uh, many of the things have been explained uh, by the quantum model. And in my next video, I'll be explaining what is the quantum model of, of uh, atoms. Thanks.